So getting into the last week of preparing for the SAT until November, right? You have to shift gears while still applying previous learning based methods, right? So you should still be doing the learning based methods, but you have to realize you only have one week left. So you got to do things that might not specifically be learning based, but they're going to increase your score as a result of like where you are right now. And then certain things that you just need to learn in order to get to the next level, right? So what are the things we can do to increase our score by instantly applying, right? So things that have minimal practice, but the most reward, right? So this is essentially how to use this video. Use this as a guide to things that you're just instantly going to apply at the end and maybe practice a very tiny bit so you just get used to doing it at least once and then see the improvement from there. All right, so these are my best SAT tips and hi, I'm Karthik. Okay for triangles, right? Every single triangle equation, right? Or question that you're gonna get, any sort of thing that involves it either involves these like three main concepts together or separated, right? It either involves trig. So trig is like sine, cosine, tangent. And that could also mean the inverses of those, right? So inverse tan, inverse cosine, and all those functions. So you need to know what those are. So you need to know SOHCAHTOA, you need to know how they work with certain angles. And also something that would be useful to know, right? Would be like 90 degrees minus an angle cosine sine right so like that formula and if you don't know what I'm talking about definitely go look it up right um, trigonometry formulas and then look up like the special cases right and they have special cases for specifically 30 60 90 45 45 but if you just memorize the side angles that's pretty much what it is right so know the special triangles and that's pretty much grouped into trig area right so just it's, it, this is the easiest one, right? Just how area of a triangle is calculated. Um, but more complex questions arise from that, right? So it'll have like two similar triangles and it'll ask you like, what is the change of the height of one triangle as a result of something else, right? Um, the last thing is Pythagorean. Also extremely simple, but you're going to have to use Pythagorean and trig to might find some like sides of an of a triangle that you might not be able to find just using one of them alone, right? So pretty much you have to understand how sides and angles work with trig and Pythagorean, how using those two, essentially you can solve for any side and angle of a triangle given that like you're given like one side and an angle, right? And also the very premise of all of these is that it's a right triangle, right? Is that this triangle is a right triangle and it's not, um, a obtuse or, you know, it's not just a weird triangle that you can't use this, right? Because trig and Pythagorean actually only specifically work for um, triangles that have a 90 degree angle in it, right? So that's very specific. So you need one angle that's that non 90 degree side. And you know, once you have a non 90 degree angle and a regular angle, you can use the fact that all the triangles angles combined equal 180 to solve for the last one. So if you're just given one angle, and you know, it's a right triangle, you know, all the sides of the triangle, essentially, right? And because you you know all the angles and you have one side are able to solve for every single side where right? you can solve for one using trig and then the other one using Pythagorean or both using trig if you really feel like it right but essentially you need to know how to use all of these in order to solve for any sort of thing in a triangle. And if you just know them, spend like 10 minutes reviewing them, you're going to get every question in this triangle aspect correct, right? Okay, I'm going to come up with like all the really common problems, right? In August and in October and all the things that I've heard from students who've taken the exam, as well as stuff I've seen from the October QAS, here's some of the common problems that are showing up, right? So the number one thing that I think so many students actually don't know, but like it's shown up twice in a row. And I really think that it's going to show up in November or December or both, right? Is completing the square and circle equations, right? They'll give you a circle equation, but they won't give it to you in the factored form, right? They'll give it to you in like a X squared minus 10 X plus Y squared minus six X equals 30, right? Um, that, I don't know if that one is solvable. It's just one I came up on the top of my head, but essentially they don't give you the full, the full circle equation, right? Cause circle equations, you need to have it like X minus H squared and then plus Y minus K squared equals the radius squared, right? So what you have to do is complete the square. If you don't know what that is, just look it up on Khan Academy, watch the video and the tutorial on it. It's actually a really simple concept. If you just understand how like um, a minus B squared or A plus B squared is factored, right? So it's like A squared minus 2AB plus B squared, or, you know, the same thing, except it's plus 2AB. If you just understand that fact, that completing the square becomes ridiculously easy. They never make it too hard for you. And it's just the idea you have to add the thing to both sides so that you can factor it overall. Don't use my explanation of completing the square here to base your knowledge of it. Go research it, watch a 10 minute video on it, and boom, you're going to get that question correct. Okay. The second one is your area increase. 
increases, right? So two objects are going to be similar, right? Or one object is like three times the area of another, find out some side length of the other object. You, you just need to have a good understanding of similar, like similar objects, right? So if you have like volume and then you have a cube that's like three times the volume, like what if every side changes by a certain metric, what does every side change by, right? Well, essentially that metric, you can just multiply it to every single side, right? Because like, let's say every single side changes by a certain factor. Let's call that factor X. So it's our whole equation multiplied by X cubed, right? Or three X, honestly, um, it's three X. So figuring out like what is actually changing about every single number and every single value essentially gives us what the answer is, right? So um, definitely watch a video on area increases, but basically if two, these are just questions that come up often, right? And you'll be able to find them on practice exams that two objects are going to be similar and it's going to ask you what's the increase in total area or like how much to decide increase by, right? Um, data interpretation. This one is so common and it it's the easiest one to just learn right now right learn what standard deviation is literally it's in the name standard of deviation it's just how far away is the graph like is it really spread out is the data like really thin or is the data really concentrated right if it's concentrated it's not that deviated if it's really wide then it's very deviated right so the number would be higher know what range is know what median is know what mode is know how to calculate for the median right um, I, I've seen like questions like bar graphs, right? And it'll ask you like, what is a potential value of the median? And you have to realize that the middle number, right? That's what the median is. The middle number lies in a certain range. So the number has to be within those ranges, right? So no, you can solve the median. Even if you don't know exactly what every number is, you can get an idea of where the median is supposed to be, right? Another type of problem is one solution versus many solutions, right? So it'll give you an equation and it'll be like, make this um, equation only have one solution or make it have no solutions. Right. And basically the idea is we want to make all the variables the same, right? Let's say the first equation is like two X plus five Y equals seven. And the second equation is like four X plus 10 Y equals whatever. Right. And we need to figure out what that, whatever value is. Right. So basically we want to make the variables the same first. So make them the same. You can divide that second equation by two and then the variable side becomes the same. Now it's only the numbers that have to change. Now, if we only want one solution, we just have to make it a different number and it's one solution. Right. Um, and if we want a, just like infinitely many solutions, we make it the same number and then it's infinitely many solutions. If we want zero solutions, solutions, all we have to do is make, or actually I said um, previously that when you do um, one solution towards it, um, it's a different number. That's actually incorrect, right? That would be if you have one number, right? It actually makes it not have any possible solutions because those two exact variable combinations, they're going to equal something that's Ex like different and that's not possible unless there's no solutions right um if you want it to have just one solution then just have the variables be different and equal different things right almost any set of different pairs of variables like any systems of equations if you just line them up it's going to have one solution right so that's essentially how to do it just practice that concept at least once and you'll get it right um Okay, easy to hard rankings. This is more meta about your preparation and things that you're doing specifically. So you should already have a general idea of what concepts you find hard and which ones you find easy, right? So you should have an idea like, okay, I struggle with quadratics, but I'm really good with triangles, right? Um, rank those concepts, first of all, and then realize there's one more aspect of this, right? So e with concepts that you have a very good familiarity with, harder problems with those concepts are still going to be easier than the medium difficulty problems that are just like the, your hardest ones, the ones that you have no idea about, right? So harder problems within them are going to be easier than like medium difficulty problems with your hardest concepts. So use that ranking, right? Use the idea that you want to focus on all the like problem types that you do know, and then go to the easier versions of the ones that you're not as familiar with, and then the medium ones, and then do the hardest versions of the hardest concepts that you don't know, right at the very end. And what this is going to do this is going to save you time. So you're going to put more effort into the and time into the questions you actually do know guaranteeing a higher accuracy rate on those. And then that is going to just increase your accuracy because you're actually focusing on the easier problems, which are worth the same as the problems that are difficult, right? So by doing the easier problems first and spending more time on them guaranteeing their accuracy, you're boosting your accuracy overall. Okay. Word problems. I have a full guide to math word problems already on my channel. It should have been posted about a week ago. So go check that out if you want a full detailed idea. But basically, 
Um, it's just a complex application of a skill you should already know, right? So recognize the pattern within that skill that you've applied before and use this framework, right? And here is the framework, right? So it's just a basic summary of it. I go into more detail in that video, but basically you identify the known and unknown values, right? And use the same variable to represent all the values if it's possible, right? And so like, let's say I have like amount of lions and amount of bears, right? And the amount of bears is double the amount of lions, right? So amount of lions would be X and amount of bears would be two X, right? I use the same variable, but I'm representing two different things, right? Um, I could easily just said X and Y, right? But we want to use the point of parity, the point of relation, right? To use the same variable to represent all the values. So try to make equations um, and combinations, right? To turn unknown values into known values, right? So if I have an unknown value, like if I labeled the amount of bears just Y, how can I use combinations of lines to turn it into the bears value? So do that for every piece of information you know, and then figure out what portion you fail to do, right? Um, are you just failing to convert it into unknown? and unknown are you failing to like use the same variables do practice problems like Khan Academy has really good ones and like look at the word problems and then practice just that method and you can use the hints to see specifically where your ideal like thing is right so like what specific portion you get wrong and then you can use the ideas in order to figure it out okay um, common issues that people make and careless mistakes, right? So here's an example of some of the careless mistakes, like people just read over information, right? That's an overconfidence issue. You need to practice fully reading every word of every problem, even if you feel like it's an easy problem using the pencil method, um, where basically you like take your pencil and go over every single word and you can use your finger as well if you really need to. If that's never been a problem for you, um, it's honestly just an overconfidence issue and you just need to practice fully reading, even if you find the problem easy, right? Um, careless solving errors, um, make your work more neat, right? That's something you can instantly apply, but the root of this issue is a practice issue. You just haven't practiced this problem enough. If you're making careless mistakes on the actual solving of it, you're not fully confident in that problem, right? Or then that type of problem, essentially, uh, misreading what you were solving for. So many people will like solve for, let's say X, right? X is the thing that they're looking for and say that that's the answer. But the question really asked you, right? What is two X minus five in this scenario? Right. So you weren't solving for X. You're actually solving for two X minus five. So people will just solve for X and then say that's the answer. Right. So they won't read that last part. And it just ties into just not reading over the information. Right. Um, but also people don't use the shortcut. There are always shortcuts that are going to be there every time it asks you for 2x minus 5 instead of the variable itself. There's always going to be some easier way to solve it that doesn't involve you solving directly for the variable, but just canceling terms and being able to solve for that group of things, right? 2x minus 5 instead of just the x and then plugging it back in and solving for 2x minus 5. Okay, using the calculator too much. Honestly, the SAT calculator section is designed to be done without a calculator. It's designed that like the only things you really need the calculator calculator for is just the arithmetic that would just take longer if you did it by hand. So realize that the only, the calculator is a time saving tool, not something that's going to give you the method, right? So you don't really need it. You only need it for longer arithmetic and you're using, if you're using it for something else, you could be getting problems a lot done a lot faster. Okay. Take action right now. If you want this video to work for you, actually apply these things. Practice them at least once. And if you don't have enough time, just internalize how you would practice it, right? Or just think about like, okay, how would I use this if a problem like this came up on the exam? So you can at least get used to them in some sense, but honestly, just practice them. If you have a couple of hours, just take the time to do them. If you guys are interested in SAT prep, click the link down in the description. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you learned something today.